What's going on guys? This is Mike Noid and today we are going to be unboxing two starter packs for Starlink Battle for Atlas. When I was a kid, I was completely obsessed with Skylanders. I have this big bin of Skylanders that range from all six games. Instead of having a game collection that looks like this, collecting these figures were expensive, each one about 10 to $15, so I didn't buy as many games as I could have. And I'm sure some people felt the same way. The Toys to Life games slowly but surely started to die out. Skylanders, Disney Infinity, Lego Dimensions, Hero Portals, Plug and Play. Is that how to train your dragon? All ended by 2017. Amiibos are still being released as of today because one, they're Nintendo figures, people want them. Two, usually they aren't necessary to play the game. And three, some of them can be used in more than one game. However, there was one more Toys to Life game that was released in 2018. Starlink Battle for Atlas. This game is one of the last, if not the last, Toys to Life games that exist, released on October 16th, 2018. On one hand, I tried to convince myself that I have way too many figures already, I don't need more, but on the other hand, the Switch version has Fox McCloud, I need to get it. The starter packs never went out of stock at my local Walmart, and for almost two years, they've been dropping in price. The original price was $74.99, and then I saw it drop down to $59.99, then it dropped to $49.99, $39.99, and this summer the price dropped down to $29.99. So I left Walmart with one of the two Switch versions of Starlink, and within 48 hours the other one was gone, so I was pretty proud of myself for not hoping it would go down to $19.99. So here is the Starlink Battle for Atlas Switch Starter Pack. Once again, the main attraction to go for the Switch version is that you can use Fox and the R-Wing in the game. Opening this up, we see some documentation as well as a poster which you can use to keep track of what figures you have. Then you have the game itself that shows nothing interesting on the back. Flipping the packaging over, we'll start with Mason Rana. The figure itself looks okay. I mean, the figure is small enough to fit in the palm of my hand, so I can understand why there's not much detail on him. And then we have Fox McCloud himself, uh, looking not too bad. He's in the same boat as Mason, so he doesn't have extremely fine detail, but for what we do get, he doesn't look bad at all. Like, I can still recognize that he is Fox, which is good. And then we have the Frost Barrage and Flamethrower weapons that attach onto the the ship. And then we have the R-Wing. I was honestly very surprised how great this looks. I'm not that big on the Star Fox games, but I really do appreciate how amazing the ship is. You can move these flaps right here and you have a hole where Fox is going to go. And finally, you have the special Joy-Con grip. You pretty much use it as a regular grip, but this is how the game will read the characters, ships, and weapons. Having all these things on a controller gives it more weight, but it's still playable for sure. However, it's a bit less comfortable than a regular grip, which may be a turn off for those who already hate the regular grip, but I still think it's more convenient than having a base plugged into the console. After I opened up everything, I was wondering how does the Xbox or PS4 versions read in the figures? They use standard controllers so a grip wouldn't work. And after I did research, I ended up getting the Xbox starter pack version. I mean, these went for cheaper on eBay, only for 18 bucks, so I said, what the hell, let's get it. You get pretty much the same documentation and why does the Xbox game cover look cleaner than the Switch version? Once you get to the stuff in the front is when you see the differences. The base that reads the figures is a controller mount instead of a grip. So you just plug it into the controller like this and put this part down and you're all set. I'll just leave Mason and the two weapons we already got inside the packaging and look at what wasn't in the other starter pack. We have the Shredder weapon as well as the Zenith ship. It looks pretty cool. You don't have any flaps that move but you do get this hand. So yeah, not much differences between the two packs. So even though this was just an unboxing, I still wanted to share my first impressions of the game both on the Switch and Xbox One. So I'll start with the Switch version. After you update the mount, you can select your character. Wait, I haven't even scanned them in yet. Why are they showing up? The figures are preloaded into the game, which allows you to play the game portably without using the grip. Not only the figures in the starter pack are preloaded, but you also have the Shredder weapon and the Zenith ship preloaded, which were included. So pretty much you get more stuff when you buy the Switch version and you have access to the exclusive Fox gameplay. This kind of reminds me of what's going on with the PS4 version of Square Enix's Avengers 
characters, which is making Spider-Man exclusive to that version. Anyways, I played the first 10 minutes of both versions. They're just about the same story, except one of them has Fox. The gameplay is pretty cool, you control the ship and explore the planet you're on while attacking enemies with your choice of weapons. The visuals aren't bad as well, obviously the game looks better on the Xbox One version. So not a bad game, I do plan on playing more of it for sure. For those who are waiting for a Star Fox game on the Switch, this is pretty much what we have for right now. So overall these weren't bad purchases at all, 75 bucks is way too much for either version, but for 18 to 30 bucks is definitely a good price. Obviously the switch version is the pricier one because it includes more content and has one of nintendo's most recognizable characters in it if you want to play starlink i would advise you to go with the switch version for sure and if you can't find any additional figures for a decent price or don't want to have them in general you can not just buy the digital versions now it's just DLC. Well, that's going to be it for today's video. Let me know what you guys think of Starlink Battle for Atlas down in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching. And of course, I will see you guys in the next one. Take care. I mean, that's what those figures were basically. Physically DLC.